My name is Tina. Um, I'm a pharmacy student and I'm a Hindu. Dr. Zake, I just want to ask, you're from India. I'm not so sure whether you're familiar with this um, practice in, among Indians, you know, um, regarding this leaf that you go and consult uh, someone. And if you manage to find your leaf based on champagne and other things like that, your whole life, your name, parents' name, I don't know whether this is a practice of Hinduism or is something made by the temples or people. And if so, if everything is already written, how is it comparing Hinduism or maybe this practice with Islam, um, fate and free will? Thank you. The sister posed the question that there may be certain practices in India about picking up leaf, which mentions about the future. There are different types of practices. It may not be part of the scripture, but there are different, different types, mainly talking about the future. Jyotish, you know, you go to Jyotish, to a fortune teller. You go to a fortune teller, different types. You see on the streets, there are many cards kept, and a parrot goes and picks up a card, and then they read, and that talks about the future. You go to a machine, put your date of birth, and the machine tells you something. Now, based on this, based on this, you go, I'll first tell you about it. There was a psychologist in States who taught a class of 100 students. And at the end of a week, he said, I will tell you about your past to each student. And he wrote to each student separately. He gave them a chat. He said, don't open. You open together. And after you open, you tell me how accurate was I in my talking about your past. So all the students open and 95% of the students, they said that the professor was more than 90% correct. 5% said that he was 80% correct. The key to it was the professor wrote the same thing for everyone. For example, you go to a machine and give a birth date and the machine will tell you something bad is going to happen in the next 10 days. This person, the machine will say that something good is going to happen. Even if 100 bad things happen, something good will happen. So most of these things, talking about the future, it's a big fuss. Sorry, I just wanted to say because like my family, it's a thing to do this. So my leaf was found and they read it. So things in it like, I guess, you know, science students try to think logically, rational, whether it's possible. Because sometimes when some things they say, for example, this is your mother's name, they got it correct. This is your father's name, they got it correct. And I think it's in Sanskrit. so. It's like you have to believe entirely what the guy is saying because you can't check it yourself, whether it's right or wrong. At, uh, I think I was 16 when I read it. So they said the age where you read it was 16. There's two, like, maybe out of 10 things, eight things you got correct. And it's like sometimes I try to think this logic and the fate, it's like a, it's, there's a fight there. Which should I believe? I'll just come to it, sister. Let me complete my answer and that will cover your question also. As I was saying, that most of the people that do is a big fuss. It's a big gimmick, just to make fast money. What Quran says, which I mentioned in my talk, Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 90, Ya Ladin Amanu, O you believe in the Malkhamru or Mysuru, most certainly intoxicated and gambling. Well, Azabu al Aslamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rich to minimally shaitan. These are Satan's handiwork. First animal will come to fluent. Abstain from the handiwork that will be prosper. Here, Quran says alcohol, gambling, fortune telling, and dedication of stone. Fortune telling is him. These are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it that you may prosper. Quran does not say that no one can predict the future. Alcohol, gambling, fortune telling, dedication of stones. These are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it. Quran does not say no one can predict the future. But most of the people who predict the future, they are just doing a gimmick to make fast money out of it. Based on the Quran and the Hadith, we come to know that there are Hadith of the Prophet Wasallam that there are jinns who listen and they pass on the message to certain people. We as Muslims should not be involved in it. It is prohibited. But that does not mean no one can predict the future. Most of the people who claim are all wrong. But there may be certain human beings who can predict the future. But we as human beings should not indulge in it. Whether it's right or wrong, indulge in it. Quran does not say you cannot. There are many people who talk about palm reading. And there are times when some people are 50% correct, some people are 70% correct. If you put heads or tails, 50% will be right, sister. No, heads or tails, 50% will be right. So, some people do it just by chance. There may be few 
may be a very small percentage who may have the art of knowing about the past. That is mentioned in the Hadith of Prophet ﷺ. But we as Muslims should not indulge in it. We should not indulge in black magic. We should not indulge in fortune telling. Why? It will cause us harm. So in this context, sister, we as Muslims are not allowed. There may be a very small percentage which may tell quite a major portion of your past or of your future. A very small portion. But we as Muslims are not allowed to indulge in it. That's a commandment, like how we are not allowed to have alcohol, we aren't allowed to gamble. So indulging in it is not good, it is prohibited. The same thing I'll tell you, that as a human being, if you agree that Quran is the word of God, the Quran does not allow a human being to... Hope that answers the question, sister. Now, I mean like, now once I've already seen it, I rather would have not seen it. But because now you know it, and then it's stuck here, it's a bit difficult sometimes when you want to just believe in fate or free will. And then in this context, do you believe that uh, we can still practice free will or is on fate? Uh, sister asked a question that if you know what is happening, then can you practice free will? As I told you, there's no one you can say who can 100% talk about the future. So even if, you're, like you said, out of 10 things, 8 are coming correct. You may never know the thing which hasn't come correct, it will come correct or not. So you yourself said 80% correct. So it may come, may not. So it's in the free will. As far as Islam is concerned, Islam, we have to believe in destiny, that is Qadr. It's one of the pillars of Iman that we Muslims should believe in Qadr in destiny. I will tell you what is destiny as far as Islam is concerned. That is clearly mentioned in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a child is born, the father is worn down the neck. It's mentioned in the Quran. Everything what we're going to do, Allah knows. But that does not interfere with free will. Teacher is teaching in a classroom for one year. Just before the final examination, the teacher predicts that this student, he will get first class. He'll come out first in the class. This student, he'll get second class. This student, he will fail. It's just an example, brother. Don't feel bad. <laughs> now, when the examination takes place, after the results out, this student comes out first class first, he gets second class, this student fails. Now, can the student who failed tell the teacher, because the teacher predicted, I will fail, therefore I failed? Can he blame the teacher? Yes or no? No. Why? Because the teacher knew this student intelligent, used to do his homework, used to attend the class throughout the year, this student average, this student used to go for movies, play hooky, bunk school. So, teacher predicted. Same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ilm gab. Now, the difference between the teacher and Allah, the teacher as a human being can make a mistake. Can be right 99% but not 100%. Always Allah has ilm gab. He has knowledge of the future but he has given you a free will. For example, you come at a crossroad. There's road 1, 2, 3, 4. You can choose any. You choose road 2. So Allah knows in advance on this but you will come at a crossroad. You will choose road 2. It is not because Allah has mentioned you will choose road 2 you're choosing. It is because you will be choosing Allah road in advance. For example, after you pass standard 12th, your A levels. You can either become a doctor or engineer. You choose to become a doctor. So Allah knows in advance that after you pass your A levels, you will choose to become a doctor. Choice is yours. Not because Allah has written you have become a doctor, because you have chosen, Allah wrote in advance. Now, once you have come at a crossroad, one, two, three, four, you have taken road two, you come at another crossroad, A, B, C, D, E. You choose road D. Allah knows in advance that when you come at the next crossroad, you will choose road D. So it is because you will be choosing Allah road. Otherwise, people will say, it's mentioned my takdeer. I will commit murder. I committed murder. Who's to blame? Allah is to blame, not me. If it's mentioned my destiny, I'm going to rob. I rob. Who's to blame? Allah is to blame. Allah or earn by doing hard work. You choose to rob. So Allah knows after you finish your college, you could do hard work or you could rob. You choose to rob. So you can't blame Allah. Allah knows in advance, Allah is ilm gab. So there is something like taqdeer, destiny in Islam, but Allah has given us a free will. Allah has given us a free will, we are responsible. Otherwise, then where is the test? And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah khalaq al mawta wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good and deeds. This life sister is the test for the hereafter. So that's the reason Islam says don't indulge in fortune telling about the future. Now as you're saying, something is always clicking here. So you may think that he may have told you, okay, at the age of 30 you'll die. 
So you may be thinking, oh, I'm going to die. You may not die. So what if you have done a mistake? Forget it, sister. Take it out. You lead your normal life. Try and find out which is the truth. What you have to do, sister? Do a research. Do a research of various religious scriptures. Which is the true scripture that will give you serenity, calmness, peace of mind. Forget what the fortune teller has told you. Even if it comes out to be right, no problem. You do what you feel is right based on your research. That how to lead a life. So this Quran, sister, is the last and final guidance given by Almighty God to humanity. It's not meant only for the Muslims or the Arabs or the Malay. It's meant for the whole of humanity. And if you read this book, inshallah, you would get peace of mind. I request the volunteer to gift you a copy of the English translation of the Quran. If you read it, inshallah, it will give you peace of mind. Thank you. From the question. Thank you. We will come back to mic one. I request the non-Muslim brothers and sisters, this is the opportunity to ask questions. Please feel free. Though the moderator said you have to ask questions on the topic. For non-Muslims, there is a concession. You can ask any question on comparative religion. Whether it be Islam, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be on the topic, outside the topic, this is the opportunity. Normally, after religious talk, the person who gives the religious talk doesn't have open question answer session. Because if you have open question and session, the poll will open up, you know. So normally after religious talk, you don't have open question and session. I like dialogue because it's a dialogue. You know, talk is a monologue, one way talk. It's a challenge for me also. And you have a right to question me. You have a right to disagree with me. Only tell me the reason. If I'm at fault, I will agree. If not, I will correct you. You can even criticize the Quran. Please feel free. This is the opportunity. Normally you don't get such opportunities after religious talk where you can ask any question. You can ask any question on compared religion. I request my non-Muslim brothers and sisters, please come to the microphone, make a cue, ask the question, something which is troubling you, maybe before you came here, which was troubling maybe two years back. This is the opportunity. I will try my level best. Even if you criticize Islam, I'm young, I can take it. No, I've got white hair, but I'm young, mashallah. Yes, Welcome back friends, I hope you enjoy the video till the last minute, the six other question that I have, you know, I'm a Hindu and uh, my family background is Hindu, so there are some action that has been happening in my religion by my parents that is not discussed by the religion or not discussed by my religious book, so what is this? So actually she was trying to ask a question like, you know, there are different kind of people that use the hand, the palm. They checked the form and they said that, wow, a very great happiness has been coming to your home after two days, three days, oh, four days, after four days you will be dead, oh, after five days there will be a problem coming in your life. So like so-called people, they said that it's a fortune telling, but it's totally fine, totally prohibited because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran, in Allah alim wa ghaib as samawati wal ard. Mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known the unknown things which will be happen to you in your next time. Even the prophets, the angels, all the things doesn't know about the future except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah knows that what will be happen to you in your next time and that is clearly mentioned in the Surah Luqman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in Allah alim maghib is samawati wal ard and Allah, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in Allah indahu ilmu sa'a wa yunazzilu al ghais Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the knowledge of the qiyamah the two say it with its with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yunazzilu al ghais when will we rain? You know, like for example, it doesn't mean that uh, the um, people of uh, community or the people of uh, weather it said that tomorrow at 12 it will be rain. They say that expected rain, not it said that it will be confirmed it will be rain. So they confirm information with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَعْلَمُوا مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ That which thing, you know, a pregnant woman with what will be in the in the abdomen, the midsection of a woman. It only know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you uh, say that today ultrasound, you know, ultraviolet and you know, make technologies, it gives you, allow 
it tell you that this is the male this is female but they give you information but after 4 months 5 months 6 months etc 5 months 6 months etc they doesn't give you the appropriate information and uh, nobody know that what will be happen to you tomorrow so those people who give you a fortune tuner that i will fortune tender and i will like that total fake news it will be not accepted and Yes, there is a hadith of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that devils they come to one by one and they reach the sky and then they listen something, but then they cover and then they mix fifty to sixty-seven lies about with them about the correct words. So they make uh, sentences from them and then they spread to the fortune channel and then you know like they say that one word is correct and the rest of ninety-nine it will be fact. So they combine it and they make story from them and then they say that we are fortune to them. So it's totally prohibited in Islam, and I hope you enjoy the video. If you like the video, subscribe the channel and share it with your friends.